All right, it's time for the ACC Atlantic preview. You guys know what that means. We're running through Boston College, Clemson, Florida State, Louisville, NC State, Syracuse, and Wake Forest. So, uh, Chris, you want to just start alphabetically? Yeah, that's why we've been doing it. Let's keep rolling that way. All right, let's do that. Let's start off with Boston College. Last year went 7-5. and five. This year, the over-under on my bookie is 6.5, and, and the juice on that is... It is minus 155. They expect them to go over six and a half. But they, won't want, they don't want to move the number, though. Nope, they don't want to move the number. Man, that's, but, a, that's a high price. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So if you like the under, I would, uh, I would jump on that thing. And I think this is going to be pretty close. Uh, ESPN's FPI has them favored in six games. Sophomore stars, quarterback uh, Anthony Brown and running back A.J. Dillon return. Uh, A.J. Dillon coming off of an injury last year. The number one wide receiver is uh, Kobe White. Uh, he is another sophomore. Look, they have got a brutal late stretch, right? Miami, at Virginia Tech, Clemson, at Florida State. Defense should be top 40, even with uh, losing Harold Landry and uh, both of their cornerbacks. Steve Adazio could have his best team and still finish like 7-5, and five, right? Correct. Like, that's that's crazy to me, but the schedule is pretty brutal. At the end. I mean, they yeah. here's the thing. A team like this, do you think, because I think we're both going to see this Pretty similarly in the sense of early on, team gets a lot of swagger. They, they they win a whole bunch of games on a stretch, and then it gets real hard. Normally, I wouldn't pick them to win any of those tough games. I could easily see me being wrong on that and them pulling I mean, they, off a they couple had upsets some, yeah. just because they, well, they, they did believe. last year. They, well, and they did last year, but because they believe. They've got confidence. They do, but it, the thing is you got to – you got to hit that thing early. It is. Right? It is usually easier to upset a team early in the season than late. That is true. But I, I wonder if is that, is that because, I, I don't know. I don't know what the cause and effect of that is. Do you? I, you want me to give first or? I, yeah. What look, do you got? I got them at seven and five. I got them four and four in the conference. Um, look, it's going to be tough. Like I, I've I've got them losing at Wake Forest, losing at Purdue. But I've also got them winning at NC State and then beating Miami uh, after a bye week. Yep. So, and I know that Miami comes off the same bye week, but you know BC's got them at home on a Thursday. Like, there's a lot to this. I've I've also got them losing at Virginia Tech to Clemson and at Florida State. So, like, I think they're going to be all over the map. I think I think the same thing. I think they're going to beat a team that we don't expect them to beat. Exactly. And they're absolutely going to lose to a team that they should not lose to. I believe is, that is there a more comparable team than Iowa to Boston College right now? No. I mean, I think when I was doing this, I was thinking, man, the ACC school that reminds me like that they're more similar than like it's easy to say Clemson, Ohio State because they're both like the big dogs. But like I think I was <laughs> plays good defense, doesn't turn the ball over a lot. Gonna be all the teams are supposed like, to be offenses, except yeah. one. So, offense is sometimes crap, and sometimes yeah. they just go bananas. That's right. Yeah, they're, they're gonna lose a game to a team they should not lose to, and a team where they're gonna be a double digit underdog. They're gonna smoke. They're not yeah. just gonna beat them. They're gonna beat the crap out of them. Absolutely. All right. So we got we both got Boston College yeah. seven and five. We don't have any of the same games. I don't like necessarily picking games, but. W- our losses are totally different, but it's the same concept. They're yeah. going to lose to a team they shouldn't lose to. They're and they're going to beat, beat somebody they shouldn't, they shouldn't beat. Be. There you go. All right, Clemson. We'll move on to them. The big dog. Uh, 2017, they were 12-1 and in the regular season. They won the ACC championship last year. They lost to Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. 2018 over-under is 11. Mm. And they are favored to do that. The juice is minus 125. Look, at I understand it. They're going to be double-digit favorites in every game. They got eight starters back on defense. Kelly Bryant and Trevor Lawrence coming in at quarterback. Kelly Bryant is a returning starter, of course. Uh, they got their top three running backs back, seven to nine wide receivers. They're starting tight end. They're all-American left tackle, uh, Mitch Hyatt. Uh, they're all-conference center, Justin, and I don't even remember how to say his name, uh, Falsonelli. Yeah, they, they've got a really good offensive. They've got a lot of experience yeah. on and this team. Defensive tackle Christian Wilkins and defensive end Austin Bryant like, they have the best defensive line in college football. Both of those guys could have been first-round draft picks last year Correct. and stayed in school. The trips to Texas A&M and Florida State look tough. 
but those are both first-year head coaches trying to turn around their program. That's not exactly tough road games. And I'm not saying it's not hostile. I'm not saying any of that for all you guys that want to comment. But look, the bottom line... Please comment. Is, yeah, I mean, go ahead and comment. But but I'm telling you... Take your shots. I would not... I would rather go to Florida State this year oh, yeah. and go to Texas A&M this year as opposed to three years from now when Jimbo Fisher and Willie Taggart have those things rolling. Right? Am I, am I wrong on that? Well, we work on the assumption... See, I, what I don't like is comparing Willie Taggart to Jimbo Fisher. I'm not comparing. That, I, I'm but, not, but that's I'm, all right. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you my record. I'm gonna go out here. I got him ten and two. I got him twelve and zero. I know that. I don't see. I a had a feeling you were spot. gonna. Do, let me tell you what I think. I think they're gonna go undefeated in the ACC. Okay, but they lose to South Carolina and Texas A and M. That's exactly what I think. What? That's exactly what I think. I am. That's exactly what I think. I, Jimbo Fisher is. Every bit as good of a coach as Dabo. I know it's his first year, but he is worlds better, and he is worlds at better a program at what than 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 the guy that he took over for. He is an oh upgrade. worlds better than Kevin Sumlin, yes, not worlds better up, than no, Dabo. No, I said he's as good as Dabo. Right, right, right. He's, you said he he's worlds a, better oh, yeah, after that. No, huh? he's and he's at a better situation <laughs> than he was at Florida State. Okay. He's got unlimited resources. He's got that will be a hostile game. I will tell you that. Clemson hadn't gone on the road to a place like they're going to go when they go into College Station, maybe ever. Man, they go to Columbia every other year. Like it's, I understand what you're talking in, about. That's an in-state rival, man. How many times do they pack up, they get on the plane, and they go to Texas? That's not very where, often. Where football is God. It is not very often. No, you're right. Okay. You're right. I, I think Jimbo is a class coach. He can, he can turn that team around quickly, mainly because their struggles – are things I think he's really good at fixing. Yeah, quarterback play, uh, toughness, like all, all that stuff that they were lacking. Yeah. I yeah. just I just don't see – I think a and is going to be better. And we, we had this conversation when we did the SEC West breakdown. I think a and is going to be better. I think they're going to be better than they've been, and I think they're going to compete. Um, and I absolutely could see Clemson kind of overlooking them. Okay. Okay. And so you, you think you undefeated know, in the ACC? You know my feelings about if if they're ten and two and they win the ACC championship, is, is this a playoff team? Oh, and there's no doubt they're going to get in if they go ten and two and they make the playoffs and they win the conference. Yes, if they win the championship game, yes. Okay. So that if they if they go, I think 11, they'll be twelve and zero. And two, if they go eleven and two, yes, they make they make the playoffs. Okay. Okay. You can't keep them out. There is no Big Twelve team. Our Pac-12 team that can overcome them no matter what. The ACC is just better. Let's go ahead and move on to Florida State. Let's jump into that. They went five and – no, I'm sorry, six and six last year. They uh, they rescheduled that Louisiana-Monroe game. Correct. Um, 2018 over-under is eight, and the juice is minus 130. They are favored to go over eight. New coach Willie Taggart comes in from Oregon. He was only at Oregon for one year. DeAndre Francois, who was 10-3 and three as a starter in 2016, returns from injury. He uh, left the Alabama game last year uh, and then was gone. Uh, Cam Akers should absolutely be a star under Willie Taggart's offense. The offensive line returns at 3 out of 5, the entire right side. So look for them to lean heavily on that side on the run. But they were the 10th worst in rushing efficiency in 2017. Like, they were getting stuffed at the line at like a 25% clip, yep. like at the line or, or behind. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot to this. The defense only returns three starters. It's two defensive linemen and one cornerback, but they got a ton of talent. Mickey Andrews is back, the legend, coached under uh, Bobby Bowden. He's back working with the team. He didn't have a, like an official title, I don't think. Um, but you Florida State fans can can tell me about that, I promise. I, I don't know for certain. Uh the I, the question really is: Can James Blackman win the starting quarterback job from Francois after last year? He's not as accurate. He's not as naturally gifted, but he he plays straight. He does what he's supposed to do off the field. Francois has had a couple of issues this off season. Taggart's not letting anybody know what's up. If I had to guess, I'm going to guess Francois gets the job because the bottom line is winning. Um, I mean, what what do you think about this team? Like, do, do we really know anything about no. them other than no? We don't know anything know. about them. I I don't think 
I think one of the reasons Jimbo was kind of collapsing there, I don't think this team is tough. And I think Jimbo was trying to make them tough, and he just realized it's not working. These these players just refuse to buy in. They're good, they're talented, but they're not mentally or physically ready to compete at a level that you have to be able to compete at. And 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 I think he saw that. I think his coaching staff saw that. I think that's why they had the the like fights and the problems in the coaching staff. It wasn't players fighting. It was highly competitive men trying to get these guys fired up. Yeah. And they just can't do it. I don't believe in this team. I think Willie Taggart, while they have five st- you, all the stars you want next to names, they got them. Well, yeah. But I don't know that – I've just never been a believer that that's all it takes to win in college football. I think it's going to take – and I like Willie Taggart as a coach. I think he's definitely the guy to make them tough. Yeah. We remember about those workouts in Oregon. Oh, yeah. Um, I got him going six and six again. I got him – Three games better than that. I got them nine and three. I think the schedule sets up really well for them. Uh, Virginia Tech, like we'll we'll get to Virginia Tech in another preview, but I've got them beating Virginia Tech week one on that Monday night. Um, I got them winning at Syracuse. I got them winning at Louisville. Uh, I think here's here's the three losses I've got: at Miami, Clemson, and then at NC State. I think they go on the road and beat Notre Dame. I think they beat Boston College. I think they beat Florida because all three of those games are at the end of the year. I think they're all going to be super hype games. I Willie Taggart in this spot, like I love him at Florida State. I think they're going to be great. I don't. I don't disagree with that, but I don't think he can walk in and flip a switch if a team is not tough. Which I don't respect their toughness based on what I saw last year and even the year before. I, well, I mean, the year I, before I, they went ten and three, which yes, is partially but, why I'm. But they I'm, also, but they also had the same the three losses they had. Like they had losses where they got blown out, they got outplayed by teams that were not as good as them talent wise. Okay, that, that yeah. speaks to a toughness. It doesn't. It's not a record thing. It's a it's a mental and physical way that you play. But that's that's also like I'm, they, I'm they do have this. talent enough to beat Boston teams that, College. You you don't get double digits when you add all the stars to all their players on okay. their team. That team I would take over this team and, and Tallahassee all day long. When you talk about know, when you talk about toughness and you want to talk about playing the game of football and getting after I, somebody, I understand where you're coming from on that. But you, like you, you, you talent you accounts take, for a lot. You take talent, I'll take guys that want to fight. Okay, that's just the way I've always been. And until, and Willie Taggart will get that, but he won't get it year one. You okay. can't flip a switch and make that happen. No, I understand. I'm with you. All right, let's move on. Let's do Louisville. Uh, Louisville, re- of course, replacing Lamar Jackson. That's the biggest obstacle. Jawan Pass is the quarterback that's going to do that. The defense only returns two starters, and they bring in a new defensive coordinator, Brian Van Gorder. Uh, last time we saw him was 2016, and he was being let go in the middle of the year by Notre Dame. Uh, wide receivers Jalen Smith, Seth Dawkins, and Des Fitzpatrick are stars at wide receiver. Uh, they had over 2,300 yards combined and 20 touchdowns last year. Four out of five offensive linemen return. They are replacing their left tackle, but they're bringing in a guy with experience, yep. senior uh, Linwood be, Foy. He'll be fine. Uh, there's major questions on D. They're replacing Lamar Jackson. They got Alabama in Orlando, and they're playing at Clemson. What do we make of Louisville? Like, you you want to put yours first? Yeah. I got them eight and four. Uh, I think they're going to be fine. Uh, I do think whoever comes in and steps in as quarterback is going to be exactly like every Bobby Petrino coach we've, uh, quarterback we've ever seen. We're well, like say, like Arkansas Bobby Petrino or like Lamar Jackson? Because Lamar Jackson was the outlier. Well, no. Uh, Lamar's skill set made him different because he could run. Whoever comes in there is going to inherit an unbelievable offensive line. It's going to equate to a really good run game. I don't know if uh, they can, have a can name Can we really brand say an unbelievable yeah. offensive line? Because, yeah, think, look, they I got think. destroyed the last two years when they went up against good, or against good defenses. Like, remember, Houston had like 11 they, sacks. They, they, only, they only play Clemson and Alabama. Those are two, two games on their schedule. Nobody else is going to blow them off the ball offensively. Or defensively. Let's see. You don't think Florida State could blow them off the ball? No. You don't think Boston College could blow them off the they ball? They might. They might. But they've got a good enough offense. NC State, I know, can, no, replaces NC's, like four guys, but yeah. like they play but tough. No, NC State's going to be a good defense. But they're not going to be such a great defense that Louisville – and I don't have Louisville winning all those games. They obviously got four well, yeah. losses on the schedule. 
I think their offense is going to be just fine. Bobby Petrino has replaced great talent in the past. He is a quarterback guru. We throw that word around. This guy, it does not matter who takes the snaps from the center. They always do well. He's got the receivers. He's got a very you just you just talked about how good the offensive line was, and then you're going to crap well, I on. Got, I didn't say because they're going to get blown up by Alabama fine. and Clemson. I, yeah, I, but I said everybody they got in the four out of five offensive linemen returning, I and didn't they're, say and they they're replacing good. that fifth person with a senior. They're going to be way above average in the ACC at offensive line. Okay, okay. way above average. That's I, I don't know what I like about now, Brian Van Gorder. It didn't and, matter in the fact that they've got. How many Nine guys? How many defensive guys? How many defensive teams has has Petrino ever had? Not many, but how you got to be able was, to stop somebody. How good was their defense a couple years ago when they were like number three in the country? Not great. Right. Not great. No, I'm you're not, right. I'm not worried about their defense. That's just not what Bobby Petrino cares about. I got them six and six. I got them three and five in the conference. So we're we're literally two games off. Yeah, we're only two games off. I I don't think they're that great, but I do think Petrino is a good coach. And the defensive stuff is going to be a problem this year. But it's uh, never been a problem. How good was their defense last year? They were garbage, man. I understand man. what you're saying, but they also had a guy that could account for 400 yards and three touchdowns. I don't know that Jawan passes that. He's not, he's, he's not going to account for that many, but there were a lot of those touchdowns they didn't need. They were beating people by 35, so now they'll beat them by 16. Yeah, okay. I mean, okay. instead of scoring 50 a, a game, they'll score 37 a game. Are you, yeah, okay, okay, I, I'm with you. I'm I with just you. watched Bobby Petrino do this too many times. I'm not going to be fooled. <laughs> I'm not going to be suckered in. His defense is going to suck. His quarterback is going to look great, and and his receivers are going to get drafted. That's what's going to happen. Let's move on to NC State. Let's go ahead and jump in here. They're replacing all four defensive line starters. I like this team. Senior quarterback Ryan Finley is back. Defense only has two starters back, um, and just like Louisville. But yep. they're loaded with upperclassmen. That's that, the issue. Uh, Finley says they have the best receiving core in the ACC. What else would you expect him to say? They uh, are they've got way Stephen better Lewis. than they have been. Yeah, Kelvin Harmon, Jacoby Myers, offensive line returns three starters all on the left side. Uh, senior Reggie uh, Gillespie, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, him, he, or, da, 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 I can't even talk right now. He is replacing uh, Hines at running back. And it's good that they've got a senior, but like Hines was, was pretty special. Uh, out of conference, they host West Virginia. But explain this to me. Why would NC State play at Marshall? Like, why would you make that deal if you're NC State? Like, if you're a big time program, why do you make that deal? Uh, see, I don't. I I actually I respect it. I have an appreciation for it. Give a team a home and home, or maybe a two and one. I guess. Like, it's it's kind of like Ole Miss going to Memphis. Like, yeah. why would they have to do that? It, okay, I'm with you. I understand. Because you want because you want to recruit in West Virginia. I guess you're gonna you're gonna play West Virginia, and you're gonna go to West Virginia to play Marshall. You're gonna recruit that area. There's a lot of talent that comes out of that area. That's why. Yeah, yeah. You can't, you're you right. can't recruit them from your couch, man. Uh, I do. Part of me wishes that NC State had that defensive line that they had last year. This year, well, yeah, that was really because good. the schedule sets up really, really well. I like, like really this team. well. Uh, I've got them at eight and four. Like I've got them losing to West Virginia. But that could easily be a win. Yep. Uh, I've got them losing to Boston College, but that could easily, that could easily be, be a win. A win. Uh, I've got them losing at Clemson. I've got them losing at Syracuse, just because I think Syracuse is going to beat somebody. But I've got them beating Florida State. I've got them beating Wake Forest at Louisville at North Carolina, like four straight to end the season. You know, I, the ACC is such a cluster that I don't know what to make of anybody really. But I like NC State here. I think they've they've built on something. Senior quarterback Ryan Finley coming back. I love that. I got him at eight and four, five and three in the conference. I like him more than you do. I could believe that. I got him at ten and two. I really do like this team a lot. I know They're that that defense, replacing nine starters on defense. But see, you only look at starters. Defense is not one of those positions I, I where you play but every day. They're bringing down. in like a lot of freshmen and sophomores, and, on those, this. Guys, and those guys are all. They got all the stars that you're supposed to have. They're highly recruited. They're highly talented, and their defensive coach can coach these guys up. Who you got them losing to? I don't like doing that, but I, I, pretty but much. Said, give, give me ideas. Oh man, I, I think they could lose the West Virginia game. They could lose the Boston College game, but they. I've got them. If I had to spell it out, I got them losing to Clemson, losing to Syracuse, back to back. 
That's a, okay. So I've but, got them losing but, to but those. But they could two. easily I, beat Syracuse by thirty and lose to Boston College. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. I understand. I can't foresee a way where they go on the road to Clemson and win. That is just asking too much. But I think they got the talent. I mean, they they've played them close the last two years. I think like and they I, were a field goal I, away from beating I, them two years I, ago. I don't think that they they don't think that they're the stepchild that they're not supposed to win these games. I think they think they're in the same class as Florida State and Clemson and 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 West Virginia Tech. Like I I understand. I'm with you. So look, we're this segment's going long. Let's go ahead and start moving. Uh we'll move Sy- quickly here. Syracuse. The last two are just Syracuse too. Uh you know what we didn't do? NC State's over under by the way for this year, seven and a half. So we're both so over. Juice is uh juice is minus one ten on that. Okay. Uh and they went eight and four last year, so I've got them the same record as last year. Syracuse, uh, 2017, they went 4-8. 2018, their over-under is 5.5. Juice is only minus 105. So it's a crapshoot, right? Like, they could win 6, they could win 5, they could win 4, they could win 7. It's just whatever. Uh, they started 4-3 and three last year with a home loss to MTSU and a win over Clemson. After they beat Clemson, they lost 5 straight to end the year. They lost to Miami, Florida State, Wake Forest, Louisville, and Boston College. Quarterback Eric Dungy is one of eight starters back on offense. Linebacker was their defensive strength last year, but they lost all three of them this offseason. Schedule is less of a gauntlet than last year, but it is still really, really difficult. I got them at five and seven. I got them two and six in the ACC. I got them at four and eight. We're one game apart. The only game that I, like, okay. So I've got them beating NC State and North Carolina. And then, uh, what, UConn, Wagner, at West uh, Western Michigan. Like, that's the ones that I've got. Um, everything else, like, I just I just don't see it. I don't, I don't think that. I think they're going to upset a team, which is why we both had them beating NC State, doing what they did to Clemson last year. I yeah. think they're going to beat somebody they shouldn't. Yeah, I, I like Dino Babers. I just think it's taking a really long time to build this up. You can't recruit. They just it's, cannot recruit Syracuse. Yeah, it's it's almost impossible. Wake uh, Forest. Wake Forest, Last 2017. Team. They went seven and five. Their over under this year is six and a half, and it is minus one ten for the juice. Uh, once they get rid of the guy leaking the playbook for wakey leaks and whatnot, the yeah. offense broke out last year under Dave Clawson. Pretty pretty crazy, right? Yeah. Entire offensive line is back. They lose quarterback John Wolford. The good news is that quarterback Kendall Hinton actually beat out Wolford before a knee injury last season. Uh, he's more of a runner than a big arm, so it'll be a different kind of offense under Clawson. They got eight starters back on offense, six back on defense. Can tight end Jack Frudenthal replace record breaker Cam Serigny? And I'm hoping I said those right, but I I was messing around with all my notes and whatnot, and I saw the names and was like, man, I really want to say those names. So I have got Wake Forest at six and six. I don't like their schedule. I do like the team. I like Dave Clawson. He's always been like you remember when he was hired uh, back in '08 yeah. at Tennessee, and it was all the claw fence, right? Like it's it's gonna right. rechange or change everything for Philip Fulmer. Well, then Fulmer gets fired mid year, and Clawson has to go find somewhere else to go and whatnot. Not, where did he go? Like Richmond or I mean I don't remember. It was something crazy. So he uh, he goes to Wake Forest. Last year was a really really good year. I think people have a little bit of knowledge on them this year i got them six and six too i, I kind of wanted to put them at five and seven because i wanted to see tulane come out in the game one and upset them i, I mean they, they're playing at tulane i can't pull it yeah but when you but have I can't a, pull the trigger when you have a month to prepare for the option it's, it's really easy to prepare for the option yeah if they played that game week three tulane's getting that w in my book oh yeah um and then i wanted to get them an upset but all the big games are on the road, and I just yeah. don't know that they're going into hostile territory and pulling off a win at Clemson or, you know, even at an NC State or something. Well, like I mean, that. They, they've got Notre Dame coming to Wake Forest this year. Yeah. Uh, so maybe, but I, I, couldn't, I just – I couldn't pull that trigger either. Me either. Me so, either. All right. All right, that's going to wrap up the ACC Atlantic Division. Next up, we're going to do the Coastal. 